Hey everybody, welcome to the SMA Journey 51 vlog. All right guys, in this week's video, I wanna to talk to you about a new SMN boosting molecule that's showing a lot of promise as an add-on therapy for those of us that are taking our SMA treatments. Whether you're taking Spinraza or RISD, you know, there's a lot of hope out there with regards to combination therapies. And I've already touched on Scholar Rock's treatment, SRK015, which is now known as Epidogramab, but there's another company that's trying to boost the SMN levels of the uh, protein that's in the SMN2 gene. Now, those of us with SMA are having to rely on this SMN2 gene, but it's only producing about 10 to 15% of the protein that our body needs. Now, the more copies of the SMN2 gene that you have, the better off you are. But this new boosting molecule is able to increase the level of the SMN protein that our body's producing. So just think of it this way. If you have a pitogromab working with either Spinraza or hopefully even at RISD, and then another boosting molecule that will increase the protein levels, we could be looking at a really bright future here in the not so distant future. So the company that I work for, BioNews, is the parent company for SMA News Today. And SMA News Today put together a great article that I would like to share with you. And I put a video together talking about just the key points of this article itself. But I did link the article in the description of my video. So make sure that you go down and click on the article if you want to read the entire thing. All right. Now, this video does get a little bit technical. But toward the end, I give you my opinions. And then when I come back and I give you my closing statement, I'll get a little bit more personal with this and give you what I think is really going to be a great benefit for those of us with SMA. So... Take a look at the video and I'll be right back. Thank you. Targeting a specific region of an intermediate molecule generated from the SMN2 gene increased the levels of functional SMN, the protein lacking in spinal muscular atrophy, in cells derived from SMA patients, a study shows. In addition, combining this approach with a splicing modifier similar to Spinraza resulted in even greater SMN levels than treatment with a splicing modifier alone. These findings highlighted the therapeutic potential of targeting this region, called 5-foot untranslated region, especially when combined with currently approved splicing modifier therapies. Future studies are needed to better understand the underlying mechanisms of this new approach and to test it in a mouse model of SMA before being able to move to clinical trials, the researchers noted. SMA is caused by low to no levels of SMN, a protein essential for motor neuron and muscle health, due to mutations in the SMN1 gene. While a backup gene, SMN2, is capable of producing SMN, a slight difference in its DNA sequence results in an event called alternative splicing that limits the amount of functional SMN it produces to 10 to 15 percent. Alternative splicing allows for a single gene to give rise to many different proteins. Just like in a recipe, adding or removing certain key ingredients, in this case, sections of genetic information called exons, can change the results, the messenger RNA, known as mRNA, and the final protein. Messenger RNA is a molecule derived from DNA and used as a template for protein production. In SMN2, this event causes the loss of exon 7 from most of its messenger RNA molecules, resulting in a shorter, poorly functioning SMN protein. Both Spinraza and Evrisd, known as Rizdaplam, two of the three therapies currently approved for SMA patients, work by preventing exon 7 deletion from SMN2 messenger RNA, correcting its splicing and increasing the production of a functional SMN protein. However, Targeting splicing as a means of increasing SMN levels has a sealing effect, determined by the abundance of SMN2 transcripts, messenger RNA molecules, in cells, the researchers wrote. As such, increasing the total pool of SMN2 messenger RNA and boosting the messenger RNA to protein process are two potential strategies to amplify the effects of splicing modifiers. Typically healthy SMA carriers have only one mutated SMN1 gene copy and can transmit the mutated gene to their children. 
A child needs to inherit two defective SMN1 copies, one from the mother and one from the father, to develop the disorder. Based on the different effects in patients and carriers, and given the fact that SMN is involved in the formation of the splicing machinery, known as spliceosome, the team hypothesized that in states of SMN and spliceosome deficiency, an increase in SMN levels may alter its own splicing. We suspect that the increased levels of total SMN messenger RNA is a direct effect of the 5-foot UTR untranslated region ASO, whereas increased exon 7 inclusion is more likely due to SMN feedback, the researchers wrote. Moreover, the team found that treating patient-derived cells with a combination of ASO number 1 and a splicing modifier similar to Spinraza resulted in significantly higher SMN levels than those achieved when treating cells with the splicing modifier alone. However, the team speculated that the combination treatment would not be superior to ASO number 1 alone since it already promotes splicing correction with a shift toward full-length messenger RNA. Our results add to the current understanding of SMN regulation and point toward a new therapeutic target for SMA, the researchers wrote. The team is now conducting further work to clarify the new ASO's mechanism of action, which may reveal that this type of approach can be used to restore the levels of proteins missing in other diseases, such as Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Of note, a patient application has been filed for the 5-foot UTR ASOs described in the study, and one of the researchers is a founder and shareholder of PepGen, a therapeutics company targeting severe neuromuscular diseases. In layman's terms, this means that researchers are finding different methods of boosting the SMN protein levels on top of, or in addition to, the increases that both Spinraza and DivRISD are providing SMA patients. While it may be a while before it goes into clinical trial state, those of us with SMA should be excited that these additional add-on therapies could be included in our future. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got some information out of it that you can use as well. You know, we're all excited about combination therapies, especially given the fact that epidogromab is going to be the first muscle-targeted therapy. But on top of a muscle-targeted therapy, maybe in the not-so-distant future, if this new SMN-boosting molecule therapy becomes a reality, that could really, really push us towards some great benefits. Now, they haven't even reached clinical trial status yet, so it's going to be quite a while before this happens. But it is on the radar and scientists and researchers and doctors are getting excited about this because they see the potential that it could hold for those of us with SMA. And I hope you're as excited as I am. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Remember, click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new videos that I produce. I hope all of you have had a fantastic week. Do me a favor this upcoming week. Do something for yourself that's going to make you a better person. God bless you, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. Life's rough when you feel confused. Still rough when you hear the news that each day got to pick and choose.